Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Hello comrades. So today we will be discussing carrier recoveries, specifically case one recoveries. There are many different ways that people do this in DCS, some because they want to sound cool, some mixing case one and three together, and some fairy dusting the fact that you can't really see the ball on a Kuznetsov. With the addition of a US carrier, we can now include the meatball as a reference. With a ceiling of 3,000 feet and five nautical miles of visibility, this will be a primary way of arriving back on the carrier safely. So we'll go over what a case one recovery looks like so that it can be applied to other aircraft as a whole as they're added to DCS. I will be drawing on the CV NATOPS manual at the link below, so let's get started. Case one operations are usually done what the manual refers to as zip lip, meaning there are no required comms after initial check-in and can solely be done visually. Case three has certain calls associated with it that can be used for case one if necessary. However, these are generally done if things are going wrong. Of note as well, the meatball or Fresno lens from the carrier is assumed to be seen by the aircrew during daylight operations. With all of this in place, let's go over how it would look if everyone is fully aware of what they were doing. Initially, the flight lead will check in with Marshall, stating side number, position, altitude, and lowest fuel state in the formation, which should sound something like 310, marking MOMS 275 for 40, Angels 2, 5.0. This means our side number is 310. We are off the 275 radial for 40 nautical miles from the carrier at 2,000 feet, and the lowest fuel state in our formation is 5,000 pounds. Marshall will respond with 310, state 5.0, case 1 recovery, final bearing 360, altimeter 2992, report see me at 10. Meaning that they heard your side number and fuel state. Your carrier is conducting case one recoveries and is heading 360 with an altimeter setting of 2992 and that they need you to report that you're visual of the carrier at 10 nautical miles. You simply respond with 310. When this occurs, you will give the call 310, see you at 10, and they will respond with switch tower. At this point, our comms within the carrier environment itself can be completely silent. Here we can see four positions to the left side of the carrier. The stacks begin at 2,000 feet and go up every 1,000 feet. Generally, we are looking to enter this pattern at a specific altitude, depending on our flight or a pre-planned assignment at a point tangent to the circle with our hook down at max endurance. For our example, we'll use 250 knots. What this means is if the carrier is heading north, in this example, coming from the east, we would enter at point 2, from the north at point 3, and so on. If, however, we have multiple squadrons that have been given, say, the 2,000 foot block and were returning at the same time, it would look something like this. The aircraft would begin entering the pattern and take up positions 180 degrees out from each other. We really can have no more than eight aircraft at a given altitude, two at each position. However, usually sections will join on other sections to keep the 180 out and have two four ships. They will remain within five nautical miles and able to see the carrier deck so as to determine if the final aircraft have launched. As the final aircraft arrive on the catapult, the aircraft scheduled to arrive first will begin descending only when they reach position 3 and are aft of the boat. The aircraft commencing will proceed to a 3 nautical mile initial at 800 feet and 350 knots, and if ziplip procedures are not in effect, will state commencing. Once arriving at the initial, they will state initial once again, only during non-zip lip procedures. If there are stacks above, they will begin filling in below them as room becomes available, once again at position three and aft of the boat. They will bring the carrier just down the left side of their aircraft, for an F-18 is going to be just underneath the LEX, and once passing the carrier, will conduct a 20 second break between aircraft between one and four nautical miles in front of the boat, which should have an aircraft on deck about every minute. You want to execute a 1% of your airspeed in G pull, so for our 350 knot break we would pull to 3.5 Gs. Below 250 knots for a Hornet due to NATOPS limitations, they will lower their gear, descending down to 600 feet, 
1.1 to 1.3 nautical miles of beam the carrier. On the downwind you want to trim for on speed and there are two settings you can utilize for your rat out. 450 feet which will be at the 90 degree benchmark and should go off about the time you would stop looking at your HUD and begin looking back at the carrier for reference. Or 370 feet which should have you arriving over the wake behind the boat. With the carrier just past our 3-9 line, which is where we can begin to see the back of the boat, we will execute a 30 degree angle of bank turn with between 200 and 300 feet per minute negative VSI, looking to arrive on glide slope at 3 quarters of a mile, making a total of 190 degrees of turn, looking for about 15 to 18 seconds in the groove. You will then be primarily utilizing the meatball, if applicable to your carrier, as your primary reference, which we will go over in just a bit. The call, if not conducting zip-lip procedures, which is the standard, should be side number, aircraft type, ball, and fuel state. So this would sound like 310 Hornet Ball 4.0. Flashing cut lights will inform the aircrew that the deck is initially ready for landing after launching aircraft. When aircraft are touching down, they need to ensure that once they have weight on wheels that they are commanding max power until they are stopped, at which point they can return to idle. If the aircraft is told to wave off or bolter, they will say side number spinning and will look up and right to visually acquire their interval. If they have traffic in front of them, they will maintain carrier heading at 600 feet and turn downwind once they can safely take their interval. If there are no aircraft in front of them, they will continue upwind for one nautical mile and then proceed into the downwind at 600 feet. The meatball or Fresnel lens is a row of green lights with a yellowish orange light in the center, which is known as the meatball. If the meatball is level or in line with the green lights, you are on glide slope. If above, a reduction in power is required, and if well above, a significant power reduction is required. This is opposite for a low meatball, and with a significantly low meatball, the meatball will be red. The LSO can give a wave off, which will be red lights all around the meatball. One final note is that any departing traffic will fly the carrier heading at 500 feet until they are 7 nautical miles away and then are approved to climb. This provides deconfliction between arriving, departing, and spinning aircraft. Now we'll take a look at how this is conducted real time in DCS. Hello and welcome to the SIFT 127th tutorial for Case 1 landings. My name is Coffee and I'll be your demonstrator. At this time, as I approach the carrier group, I'm going to check that I am within the weight limit for the carrier and I should be under 34,000 and I am. I'm going to set my right side to repeat HUD and my left DDI to show the HSI. I'm also going to set my TACAN to correspond with the carrier which happens to be, for me, 42 X-ray. I'm going to box TACAN and by using the course selector I can choose the BRC and my carrier group is going 311. I'm going to set my rad out 370, enable rad out, hook bypass the carrier, anti skid off, and hook down. And I should be fairly good to uh, land now. I'm also going to set the uh, range on that to be 10 miles. What you want to do when you pass the carrier is uh, you want to pass it fairly close. So if you had wingman to your right, their pattern would not be screwed because it would be uh, too much offset from the carrier. So you just want to make it easier for the other guys. Also, you don't really lose anything by doing that. So And 800, 350. A little low, but that's not too bad. Check the carrier is empty. Ready for you. Looks to be. And we are good to uh, go for our attempt. So I'm just following the uh, hard indication for the range. Wait for it to uh, go between one and one and a half before I start my turn. Nah, let's go here. Pull the G's, try and match it. I'm going to put some air brake out. I'll also preemptively descend just a little bit. Beep. 
here come down. Flaps go full. I'm preemptively trimming it out. Trim, 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 trim. Try to avoid a f cluster mark of a landing because it really wants to screw you over when you deploy those flaps. Trim for speed. Get the altitude right. Here we go, 1.2 miles from the Stennis, 600, trimmed on speed. Let's see what happens when we pass it. There we go. Between 27 and 30 is where you want to be. You want to hit 450 of the 90. So I'm going to try to do that. Could be dropping a little more. Four fifty of the ninety. Reference. Need to pull a bit more. <coughs> right out goes just as we hit the groove. Four two hornet ball seven point one. Follow the meatball in. A bit low. Just the throttle and all. Follow the meatball in all the way. There we go. And that's how you land case one. There's really not all that much to it. You want to hit the uh, 450 if you hit that, or 500. I used to do 500, but I've been told that was a bit off. But uh, either works fine in DCS. But if you can get your altitude at the 90 right, you're going to make the rest of the journey a lot easier for yourself. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. As you touch down, you want to raise your hook and bugger off as soon as you can, because there could be, especially if you fly with Wingman, there would be a lot more aircraft behind you and you need to clear the deck. Hopefully this helped a little in learning how best to tackle this difficult concept in a little more detail. There are still other cases and I'm sure questions in regards to case ones, so please leave comments with questions and I will get to them in a future video. Please subscribe for alerts on upcoming videos and comment on suggestions for additional content. This is ESF, signing off.